Can you all hear and see my screen? Yes, Prabhu Hare Krishna. Yes, we can. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Narayanam Namaskrityam. Narayanam Namaskrityam. Naram Chaiva Narutamam. Naram Chaiva Narutamam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam. Devim Saraswati Vyasam. Tato Jayam Mudirat. Tato Jayam Mudirat. Nasta Praya Suabhadresu. Nasta Praya Suabhadresu. Abhadresu. Ityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Yam Bhagavata Bhagavata Sivaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki Reading from Chapter 7 titled Knowledge of the Absolute and the Seventh Verse Matta Parataram Natnyat Matta Parataram Nanyat Kishit Astidhananjaya Kinchit Ostinamanjaya. My servum idam protum. My servum idam protum. Sutrimani ganaiva. Sutrimani ganaiva. Matta parata nanyat. Matta parata nanyataram. Kishit astidhananjaya. My servum midam protum. My servum midam protum. Sutrimani ganaiva. Sutrimani ganaiva. Any Prabhuji or Mataji? Matta para taram nanna. Matta para taram nanna. Kinchit asti dhananjaya. Kinchit asti dhananjaya. Mai sharvam idam protam. Mai sharvam idam protam. Sutre mani ganaiva. Sutre mani ganaiva. Mata para taram nanyat. Mata para taram nanyat. Kinchit asti dhananjaya. Inchit asti dhananjaya. Mai sarbham idam protam. Mai sarbham idam protam. Sutre mani ganaiva. Sutre mani ganaiva. Mata parataram nanyat. Mata parataram nanyat. Inchit asti dhananjaya. Inchit asti dhananjaya. Mai saru midam protam. Mai saru midam protam. Sutre mani gana iva. Sutre mani gana iva. Mataha parataram nanyat. Mataha parataram nanyat. Mataram nanyat. Inchid asti dhanan jaya. Inchid asti dhanan jaya. Mai sarvam idam protam. Mai sarvam idam protam. Sutre mani gana iva. Sutre mani gana iva. Mataha parataram nanyat. Mataha parataram nanyat. Inchit asti dhananjaya. Inchit asti dhananjaya. Mai sarvam idam protam. Sutre mani ganaiva. Sutre mani ganaiva. Mataha parataram nanyat. Mataha parataram nanyat. Kishit asti dhananjaya. Kishit asti dhananjaya. Mahi sarvam idam protam. Mahi sarvam idam protam. 
सूत्रे मणि गणाइव मयि सर्व इदम प्रोत सूत्रे मणि गण इवा सूत्रे मणि Word by word meaning. Matta beyond me. Matta beyond, beyond me. Beyond me. Parataram superior. Parataram superior. Superior. Na not. Na not. Anyat kinsit anything else. Anyat kinsit anything else. Asti there is. Asti there is. Dhananjaya o conqueror of wealth. My in me. My in me. Sarvam all that be. Sarvam all that be. Idam which we see. Idam which we see. Protam is strong. Protam is strong. Strong. Sutre on a thread. Sutre. Sutre on a thread. Mani gana. Money can be given. False. False. Evil. Like. Evil. Like. 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 Translation by His Divine Grace, Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Prabhupada Ki Jai. O conqueror of wealth, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pulse or strong on a thread. Any Prabhuji or Mataji would like to read this oh. portion of the purport? Oh, conqueror of wealth. There is no truth superior to me. Every everything rests upon me, as pearls are strung 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 on a thread. Go ahead, Prabhuji. There is a common controversy. Ach, okay, perfect. There is a common controversy over whether the supreme absolute truth is personal or impersonal. As far as Bhagavad Gita is concerned, the absolute truth. Absolute truth is the personality of God, Sri Krishna, and this is confirmed in every step. In in this verse, in particular, it is stressed that the absolute truth is a person, that the that the personality of God is the supreme absolute truth. It also the affirmation of of the Brahma Sangita, Ishara Parama Krishna Sachita Nanda Sachit Sachita Nanda Vigraho. That is. that is the supreme absolute truth personality of godhead is lord krishna who is the who is the primeval lord the re- reservoir of all pleasure govinda and the eternal form of of uh, of in complete bliss is and knowledge the, these authority authorities leave no doubt that the absolute truth is the supreme person the cause of all causes someone else can read this the impersonalist however argues on the strength of the vedic version given in sveta vishatara upanishad 310 tato yad uttara taram tad arupam anamayam ya etad vidur amritas te bhavanti अति अति तरे दुखम एवाप्यन एवाप्यन्ति इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड ब्रह्मा इज द प्राइमेवल लिविंग एंटिटी विद इन द यूनिवर्स ही इज अंडरस्टूड बी द सुप्रीम अमंगस डेमीगॉड्स ह्यूमन बीइंग्स एंड लोअर एनिमल्स बट बियॉन्ड ब्रह्मा देयर इज ट्रांसेंडेंस देयर इज द ट्रांसेंडेंस हु हैज नो मटेरियल फॉर्म एंड इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल मटेरियल कंटामिनेशंस एनीवन who can know him also becomes transcendental but those who do not know him suffer the miseries of the material world the impersonalist puts more stress on the word arupam but this arupam is not impersonal it indicates the transcendental form of eternity bliss and knowledge as described in the brahma samhita quoted above other verses in the sveta vishtara upanishad 389 substantiate this as follows Go ahead, Rose. You read this. 
वेदाहम एतम पुरुषम महंताम आदित्य वर्णम तम सह परस्ता तम एव विदित वती मृत एति ना अन्य पंता विद्यते अयना अया यस्मा परम न अपरा अस्त किंचि यस्मा नो नो ज्यायो अस्त किंचि वृक्ष इव स्तब्धो दिवी तिष्टति एक पूर्ण पुरुषेण सर्व I know that the supreme personality of God who is transcendental to all material conceptions of darkness only he who knows him can transcend the bonds of birth and death there is no way for liberation other than this knowledge of that supreme person someone else can read this page there is no truth superior to that supreme person because he is the supermost he is smaller than the smallest and he is greater than the greatest he is situated in a silent tree and he illuminates the transcendental sky and as a tree spreads its roots he spreads its extensive energies from these verses one concludes that the supreme absolute truth is the supreme personality of godhead who is all pervading by his multi energies both material and spiritual thank you so much uh, let's all sing together so that we can uh, save some time but we don't have to follow we can all sing together agyana timirandas agyana timirandas agyana janakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay sri gurave namaha sri chaitanya manoveshtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kalamai ham dadati sopadantikam vandeham sri guru sri yuta padakamaram sri gurun vaishnavam cha sri rupam sagrajatam sagana ragatan vitam tam sachivam satvaitam savadhutam parijana saitam krishna chaitanya devam श्री राधा कृष्ण पादन सहगण ललित श्री साखा वितम च हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधो दिनबंधो जगतपते गोपीस गोपी कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधा वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानो सुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिय वांशकणपत्रुभ्यश्च कृपा सिंधुभ्य एव च पतितानां पावलेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौरवक्त वंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू फॉर जन संग so that uh, we all discuss together and we hear and we discuss about the nectar of what the supreme personality of god had to say so in this verse there are some very critical things which krishna is speaking to arjuna about so he is referring to uh, krishna about as he is he is referring in many different terms uh, throughout bhagavad gita but here he is referring to him as dhananjay who is the conqueror of wealth because when a, when someone is the conqueror of wealth well he needs to understand what is the most supreme truth so that it gels well with the activities of acquisition of wealth because unless we know the absolute truth we have a tendency to go haywire and another thing which krishna is explaining that he is the supreme the supermost as lokla prabhupada has mentioned in the scriptures so lokla prabhupada of so far has been using the word supreme personality of godhead but here if you clearly see 
he is referring to uh, Krishna as the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Earlier, he was referring to Krishna as supreme personality of Godhead, but he is put a absolute truth in between. So this verse talks about the absolute truth. And then Krishna is saying, then like how the poles are strung together through a thread, sutre. Sutre is actually a thread. And manigana means several poles. Manigana. Mani is poles. Gana means it's a plural uh, reference. So poles. So like how the poles are connected together, I am exactly like that. And Krishna is referring to, to himself as the thread in a, in a necklace which is actually binding everything together. Like he's binding everything together through the manigana, he's binding all the living beings together. So there are two things which is really coming out very strongly. That he is the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead and he is binding all of us. So let's try to dissect this verse and understand some of the beauties which is in there as the pearl in this verse. So the absolute truth, when we talk about absolute truth, what is absolute truth? See, sometimes what happens, we hear different practitioners of spiritual authority and they give a very different impression like the Gyanis. The Gyanis, they think the Lord is present within them as Supreme Brahman. And as long as they believe that they have received the rays of the sun, they've understood sun. So it's a very, it's not incorrect, but it's a very incomplete essence to understand the Supreme, the Gyanis. They, then the Yogis, they think about the, they meditate on the deeper form of the rays. In this example, when a sun ray is coming, there must be a boiling uh, spherical thing. And they meditate upon that. And those are essentially what the yogis do. And that is also not incorrect, but it is actually incomplete. But behind this boiling fire, which is sun, there is a person, his name is Vivaswan. And the people who rely on that person are the bhaktas. We, as practitioners of devotional service, need to recognize the difference between the jnani perception, the yogi perception, and the bhakta perception. And when we understand this, which we refer in various different places as absolute truth, that there is a person, and if there's a person, then we have to do our service to the person. And we have been giving the example of the letter, FaceTime, and being there with the mother to serve. And there is differences. So Krishna is the absolute truth. And he is also the supreme person. And, and then Krishna is saying, both the energies, uh, we last time we spoke about Parasakti or Parasakti, both the energies, the Aparasakti, the inferior energy, which is actually the material energy, which is the material world, the Prakriti, and the Parasakti, which is the superior energy, the spiritual energy, they all come from the Supreme and have been there, done it. But there is one thing which this verse is talking new, that if there is energy, if there is spiritual energy, if there is sun rays, there has to be energetic. If a car is there, a car is in the creation, moving from A to B at 60 miles an hour, there has to be a creator. So if there is a creation, there has to be a creator. If there is an energy, there has to be energetic, a person who is energetic from which it, it's, the energy is emanating. And never ever 
uh, when the jnanis and yogis meditate on the brahman and the the meditate on the external uh, qualities of the supreme they never think that there is a person because they never think about the aspect of energetic if there is energy there has to be energetic there is someone who is actually emanating energy so if a sun is emanating light but that doesn't mean sun will not be able to emanate heat the heat and light in sun is part and parcel so thinking that light and heat light will come and heat will not come and heat will come and light will not come from sun that thought process is very very primitive so the light and heat comes part and parcel so when sun emanates light the heat comes as part of it and here krishna is explaining that like all this universes are there he is actually binding all these universes all these marginal energies the, the guna shakti like the persons like you and me together and don't you think when you look at the trees and mountains outside is it's beautiful it's so meaningful that lord has spent his countless ideas his supreme energies in creating this beautiful if something is beautiful if a garden is beautiful that must be a gardener who has done it well likewise krishna is saying in all these universes and all this you know souls and who are really connected in you know various different you know provinces countries and continents it they are all bound by me as a thread but that thread nobody looks at it because in this kali yuga nobody looks at this thread because if the thread is not there everything is in a disarray everything is disorganized and and that's is, is the essence of our discussion today so and also krishna is using the word resting if you look at the verse krishna is using the word resting that means everything rest upon me when something is resting on something there is an element of assurance like say for example when you go pick up a child and try to throw him up the child will become very sad very fearful but when the father comes and he throws the child up the child is in ecstasy because the child knows that the father is not going to leave him alone because the child is resting on the mindset that the father is going to catch likewise all these poles are nicely situated they are resting because the thread is strong enough to keep them intact organized together so there is an element of resting because we have a, a thought process that when we are resting on something we are relieved at least we have the bindhas mindset that life is going to be taken care by the supreme do your best but leave everything to rest because lord is going to take care he is going to look at that's the reason why when draupadi maharani you know when um, these uh, kauravas were uh, not behaving well finally draupadi maharani left everything to rest with the supreme personality of god with total surrender she has done enough she has protested enough nobody in that assembly could come forward even the vishma um, dhritarashtra uh, but when nothing could happen he just left she just left everything to rest on krishna and when you are resting with complete surrender krishna manifests in the form of a cloth in the form of a sari and all these duryodhan dusas and they were all tired so the surrender is the sense 
when something is resting on the supreme personality of god that's the reason why we have so much unhappiness in this world because we do not have an iota of surrender to anything we do not whenever we eat something we have doubts whether it is done properly we do not have full faith in the person who has made it that's why there is unhappiness whenever something is brought from a shop or something people are not happy because they think uh, you know they could have done so there is not an element of surrender in anything and everything we do because we do not lean in to rest with a very comfortable situation and the next thing is because the poles are together in the thread should krishna uses the word shutre that is the thread when all these things are together there is an element of discipline there is an element of order they are not scattered all around the place and we'll try to discuss a little bit about this so as you can see in this picture you have a, a cat holding a rat in his mouth in the left side the, the for the rat in this situation cat is exactly like how hiranya kasipi was captured by nrsinga dev and from the from the belly in intestines came out when uh, when nrsinga dev came out of the pillar he was like a cyclone he was like the most dangerous thing and the same cat on the right side is holding exactly through the neck the kitten and see how happy the kitten is in the right side because the kitten in this example is totally resting totally resting even if the same neck is being caught by the cat but the kitten knows that whatever happens my mom is not going to let me go she she is going to hold me tight she is going to take care of me she is going to nurture me she is going to give me everything as long as i start getting up uh, on my own till that time he she is going to protect me because the kitten is completely surrender but the same situation the same cat onto a rat is exactly like a cyclone is exactly like somebody who has really come to take your life and look at the uh, look at the the severity in which the cat is looking the, as if the prey is around and he is going to jump on it very different situation and when you think about it what are you thinking is essentially fear versus resting fear that the life is going to get away as soon as possible and there is no end you're just running for your life but in the right situation what to worry when the supreme personality of the god head is there to protect us do everything correct spend some time listen to his past times uh, listen to his uh, uh, verses what he has spoken and that too in the worst place the battle the, the, the worst battle would was situation in the sense that it is uh, a battlefield and look at how he is convincing his greatest student arjuna and if we rest our thoughts we rest uh, by surrendering onto him exactly like how those poles are strung together our life will be blissful but it takes time to understand that it takes a lot of time for anybody because we are all back in conditioning because we do not hear it doesn't it all starts with hearing any time you do a process of surrendering it starts with hearing more and more you hear any time even if you are not hearing a krishna katha even if you are chanting you are hearing the chanting you are hearing the glories of the lord when you are basically uttering his name because lord has put 
everything in his name in this age of Kali. So fear versus resting, very contrasting situation. The same cat giving different outcomes to the rat and her baby. And, and next, um, so you can see these pearls are all scattered all around. It's totally disorganized, right? Um, some of you might like to share some of your reflections from these pictures uh, at the end of the class during the discussion time. You see, these pearls on the left side doesn't look good at all. They're pearls, they're very valuable, but they're in disarray. When once upon a time, I remember a cricket team had 11 top players, but they were losing all the time. They are losing every game because they were not organized. They were not together. They were not really complementing each other. And look at what is binding the same pulse which are disorganized on the right. A nice thread which is giving them an element of organization, an element of order. And, and that is where uh, when it's in disarray, it's chaos. It's exactly like, you know, if people are running all around the place, they're hitting each other and then nothing is getting accomplished. But when everything works in tandem, when we all cooperate with each other, when we all try to attend Katha and all immerse in the glories of the Lord, then there is an element of bliss. We just by thinking about the Lord, by sharing your reflections, it did not be a question. You can just share, you know, what this verse means to you. And then by sharing, you are giving happiness to so many people because at this stage of our life, we have realized that the absolute truth, the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead is Krishna. And there has been immense uh, examples. We have already gone through Brahma, is saying Ishwara Parama Krishna Sachitananda Vigraha Nadir Nadi Govinda Sarva Karana Karana and uh, Govinda Adi Prusab Namaham Bhatami Maham Bhajami. It's, uh, it's the Govinda who gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses is the Purna Purushtam Krishna and he is giving an element of order in our lives. So there is a difference between chaos and order between this pulse and Krishna is binding. And when Krishna is binding this pulse, nobody is able to see the uh, thread. That's why Krishna is hidden. Krishna is there in our heart as Paramatma with, with very small size, as, as Prabhupada is mentioning, that Krishna is extremely small and is extremely huge, extremely small like a soul in our hearts and he is extremely huge like the Birat troop which is so huge that you need spiritual goggles to see. So as you can see this verse is very very emphatic in explaining that Krishna is the is the hidden thing in every successful marriage in every successful career in every successful parent kid relationship so as long as we see the hidden thread and try to recognize their importance we will realize we will have bliss we will realize krishna and as long as we try to argue as long as we try to question ourselves without that element of surrender, we will never be able to see that thread which is binding all of us together. You, we all have, we all are part and parcel of Krishna where Krishna is the Aham Bija Pradaprita and he, we all have come, uh, we are all connected through our spiritual father who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the absolute truth as to how to look at him, not as a jnani, because we will put our own mindset and we'll have to think instead of going from A to B in this way, we'll go somewhere else. Or a yogi where we'll be meditating, but in this age of Kali, where there is so much of noise, 
there, 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 when nothing is pure, it's very difficult to meditate. The only way is to gain a higher taste by having devotional service. That's the reason why people will be working hard and hard in the temple, but there will be an element of happiness. There will be an element of bliss that they're doing something for the Supreme. And, and that's the reason why whenever there is a, a, a charity which is doing something, they often end in failure because there is that ahankar which comes in. But when you grow from a temple mindset based on Srila Prabhupada's teachings, you get the right mindset to serve, not, with, not hankering for a position, not hankering. Your intent is to give happiness. When Lord is happy, when Lord's remnants are consumed nicely, when Lord is looking beautiful, and people looking at the Lord are feeling happy, then the devotional service uh, person is feeling happy about. It's a new way of thinking, actually. How to feel happiness when the kids of the Lord are feeling happy. And that is when, during our festivals, people will be spending a lot of time and they will be seeing others are enjoying looking at the Lordships, looking at the Shringa, looking at the Yajna, and just by seeing them, they are happy. So that's the difference. As you grow in devotional service, your service attitude changes, your thinking approach to the life changes, and then you grow a higher taste. That just by consuming something in a selfish way is really not the right thing. But when you see, when you give up, then you go peace. They never had Krishna. Krishna stayed with them for a very little number of years. But that mindset of giving of Krishna for someone is both sad and happy. And that's the reason why whenever we want to grow our devotional service, we think someday we will have at least the little dust of dust or equivalent to dust of the gopis in the extent of love they have for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So there's a lot for you to reflect on this verse. So I would like to hear your thought process about how Krishna is binding all of us through the string. And, and here Krishna so beautifully in this verse explaining how he's binding it. Sutre Manigana. Manigana means pearls. And how through this binding process, he's binding the whole world, the, the whole, the, all the marginal energies who are, our, who are people like us and how they're binding through this association and how um, we have to develop a taste for surrender. And there's a lot we can speak about, but I'd like to more hear more from you. So with that, I'd like to end here. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Improved.